Hello everybody and welcome to this year's high school football preview show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, why don't you tell our viewers uh, which schools we're going to be covering and their coaches. Well, we'll have Chris Hine from Sheboygan South, Steve Brixen from Sheboygan North, and Matt Zavada from, actually it's Kohler, Lutheran, and some even Sheboygan Christian kids that are playing there. Are they uh, the Crusaders, the Blue Bombers, <laughs> or the Eagles? <laughs> yeah, we're not so sure about that, but they're trying to get that program started and uh, Coach savada has got a lot of good, good, good ideas. Yeah, Coach is in his second year. Uh, during the breaks, we're going to have the uh, schedules for uh, Luther, North, and South. And uh, at the end, we'll have uh, our football schedule. And uh, so you can look for that. Uh, when we come back, Chris will have Steve Brixen on the set and uh, be talking North football. So stay tuned. All wear masks. But masking dental flaws can put your dental health at risk. Orthodontists improve smiles by fixing the problem. Visit an orthodontist to unmask a healthy smile. We're back with uh, Coach Brixen from Sheboygan North. Well, another season, you're off and running. Yeah, another season. Um, you know, I know we haven't done as well as we wanted to, uh, not just the last few years, but basically since you know I came in, we made the playoffs in 2006. You know, that's the kind of program we want here. Um, you know, not really sure what's going to happen this year, but we sure are excited to get started again. Well, the season kicked off on a real positive note. You had a nice little fundraiser, a golf outing. Uh, over 100 people attended. Almost 120 people attended. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. Uh, I think we had probably 40 more people than last year, 40 or 50 more people. So it was a very, very big success for us. We had Will Blackman from the Packers come in and give a little speech. So uh, uh, he signed some balls and gave some away as well. So it was a really, really successful one. We have a lot of our kids work that as well. And um, they have a lot of fun doing that. But very, very big success. And it's going to be a great help to the program. And fundraising is part of it. It and sure is. golf outing is kind of a nice thing to get. You know, I thought it was nice to do it, you know, in August and kick off the season. Yeah, it's always nice when we get there right at the end. It's sort of something we look forward to after our contact days. We do that at the end of uh, July. Those went real well this year. Uh, and then that Friday, we ended up going and having a golf outing. So a good way to end the week. On a, another great positive note, wonderful numbers again, up and down your uh, levels. We have really good numbers this year. We've got 50 on the varsity team. We've got on our freshman team, close to 50. We've got 47. And then we're a little down in JV. We have about 25 there. But overall, you know, close to 125 kids in the program, and uh, that's, that's pretty outstanding. We're happy with that. Now, great numbers doesn't always turn out into victories, but, I mean, obviously you guys should be doing something to get kids interested in playing and uh, enjoy playing football at North. Well, we always want to do what we can to try to make it fun. That was sort of been our staple of the organization here since I got here. You know, uh, if we can't have fun, then, then why are we going to be here? But, but obviously... Uh, it's about time we start winning some football games, and uh, you know that's our that's our number one goal this year. Uh, we're gonna have to go out and have fun every day, but but we're really working to win and change this thing around and turn it around. It's about time. You know, this is my fifth year here, and uh, you know I pretty much gave myself about five years, and this has got to be our year. Uh, with the football team, I think one of the strengths of your football team is I I think you got a lot of skilled players on both sides of the football. We have a we, each year we have good skill players, and we usually have a really good backfield. We have that again this year. Brendan Gundrum, Micah Freis, um, Kevon Rivera, Josh Brugink, and uh, uh, Reed Keen, is, uh, outstanding players. And Reed's a um, sophomore this year, so he's going to be starting in the backfield. We have a really good skill set there, also on our skill positions on the defensive side of the ball. We actually have a little size on the line this year with Chris Colon and Tim Voss and um, Fletcher Byens. So we've got some bulk there, which we haven't had before. So we're going to utilize that. you got quarterbacks on both sides of the, the field, too, with... You know, returning quarterback in uh, uh, DVC, and you got Tanner on the other side. You got two, like I said, quarterbacks on both ends of the, of the field on both sides, so that should help too. Yeah, good, you know, quarterbacks both, also just great leaders. Tanner's an outstanding leader on the defense, Derek's an outstanding leader on the offense side of the ball. Tanner's been getting a lot of reps at quarterback as well, and uh, so if anything ever happened, heaven forbid to Derek, that Tanner can come in and do a great job as well. Um, there's a uh, little change for you. You tweak the offense a little bit. Finally, yeah. We were pretty, pretty strict with our offense. And, you know, I'm a big believer in the run game and I'm a big believer in the wing tee. So we didn't really lose that concept of this. We were keeping the wing tee backfield. But we're running out of multiple formations now. And it really looks like it's a different offense, although it's, it's very similar to what we've ran the past four years. But we are going to go with a one tight end set where we always used to go with a two tight end set. Couple reasons we changed that. One is we think that in order to compete now in Division One, we think we have to get 
spread out a little bit more. And second of all, we're really playing to our personnel. We've got incredible, like you said, good skill players. You know, we're getting Derek. We want to do the option more. We want to get him running out a little bit more as well, utilize his uh, athleticism. So um, we're taking that route, and we're going to see what happens. But uh, it sure has been fun to, to run. Kids have picked up on it pretty well this year. I think the conference is just loaded. You know, I still, there's things I have about the conference. But one thing it is, it seems they're talented. But it looks like the bottom teams and the top teams might be a little closer together this year. Well, you know, some of the teams that, that, that were really the, the stronger teams in the conference, uh, you know, I'm sure they're still going to be strong teams. But I, I know a lot of kids that were really talented seniors graduated from several teams last year. Not to say that uh, they're, uh, you know, they're that much weaker. Those Bayports and, uh, and De Piers and Green Bay teams, they're, they're going to come through and they're going to be strong teams again. But, you know, we feel that it is, there's a little more parity than there was in the past. And we feel we're going to be a little better this year. So, you know, goal is always the playoffs. And, uh, um, you know, we're just going to wait and see what happens. Another change this season is they finally put Sheboygan South on the schedule as a conference game. And you're going to play them at the end of the year instead of at the beginning of the year. Right. The last game of the year would be that Thursday before level one playoffs the following Tuesday. And we're excited, number one, to have South on the schedule being a regular conference game. That's fun for North and South and, and the city in general. That, that's what we need here. And uh, the nice thing is that that's at the end of the year. And that's what happened. It hadn't happened since 2006 where, um, you know, we had that really exciting game, North and South both. So we want to have that again. And, um, you know, I hope North and South both make it to the playoffs. But it would sort of be neat if it got down to that last week again and, uh, uh, you know, uh, had that kind of competition at the end of the year between North and South. Well, I know Coach Hein would always make comments too, and you did too, is, well, I don't think we're at our best right now. It would be nice to see these guys at the end where we both are, you know, kind of peaking at the end of the year. Yeah, well, you know, Chris and I know each other real well, and I talked with him about this, and the funny thing is that we're going to have so much tape on each other that uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be hours of watching uh, video, but we're going to have a lot of stuff to look at from them. They're going to they're gonna see everything that we're doing. Uh, so nothing's going to be new to them, even though we're, you know, we're implementing new things this year because, you know, they're going to have eight games on us already. Yeah, that's looking forward to that as well. Uh, one final thing, uh, for those that may or may not know, WIA is considering some readjustments, uh, perhaps taking conference play out of, of the, the scheme and doing district things. Any thoughts of maybe you're changing over to doing something to that in the future? Well, I like, I like the way that... Uh, that the league is set up right now. Um, I, I do like they proposed different teams that we would be playing, and then it goes back, I believe, to the old Fox Valley where you have the Oshkosh uh, teams and Fond du Lac and you know, Manitowoc still. And, you know, that's interesting. I think it would be neat to play some of those teams. But this is a good conference. This has uh, got some strong teams. If we want to be the best, we've got to beat the best. And we have a lot of really good, strong teams in here. But um, I'm not really a big fan of the proposal, in, in all honesty. I like the way things are now. I I'm a true believer that, you know, in real life, you know, people win, people lose, and uh, you got to earn your way to the playoffs. Yeah, I'm kind of traditional, too. It's nice to play south and, you know, Preble and Manitowoc and things like that. Sometimes with this schedule, it seems like you hopefully will never miss those schools, and those are always nice teams to play. Yeah, and I mean, we've we missed, you know, Manitowoc the last two years, and, and that's a team that's right up the road. So we've got to play those guys. We've got them on the schedule again this year. We've got South on the schedule. So uh, we are, uh, we, we are we're off to a pretty good start so far. We've had a few, a, a few bumpy practices the last couple of days. But uh, that's bound to happen. Overall, I think we've done a lot better than, uh, uh, than we thought we would. So uh, we're pretty excited to get the season started. Well, thanks so much for coming in, and uh, good luck in your scrimmage this thanks, week Chris. and uh, first week, and we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, when we return, uh, Mike Martin will be with Coach Savada from Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian. For 37 million Americans, this is life, living below the poverty line. Find out what you can do, please. Don't let one more fall. Go to PovertyUSA.org and get involved. Joining me is Matt Zavada from Sheboygan Lutheran, Kohler, and Christian this year, huh? Coach? Yes, yes, what that's it. What happened there? Uh, the, uh, Christian approached us and, and they wanted to try football out, so uh, we thought that is where our program is now that it wouldn't hurt to maybe add a few more players in and and uh, so we got a, a co-op going with them now I guess a try-op mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we got a couple players and hopefully they can make an impact with our program. Literally a couple right? Two yeah okay. I got two but uh, a couple quality kids that, that we like. I was gonna say it's got to be a real battle because they're pretty strong in soccer and that's a fall sport so you lose some kids from there. Uh, yeah, there, there could be uh, a couple kids that, that uh, uh, we could get, but, um, you know, I, I think that 
I'm not going to worry about the kids that we don't have and, and the ones right. that we have. That's, that's who we're going to coach and try to get. Usually what happens when they co-op a team and they take the uh, population of all those schools and add it up and then they plug you into whichever division, do you think that bumped you up a division or were you able to stay down? Uh, I think it might move us up. Uh, I'd have to look at our, our enrollments, but I think we'll be at, we're between five and four. So, uh, but right now we're not really concerned about that because we wanted to start competing in our conference. Um, I guess if it gets to the point where we need to worry about our, our, our division, uh, then I think we're in a pretty good spot at that right. point. Now, you're entering your second year as the head coach. Uh, first of all, how did the first year go for you? You know, it kind of went as, as expected. Uh, we got one win, a whole new system. Uh, you know, we came in with flexible on offense, and it, it takes a while to, 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 for the kids to learn that. Uh, you know, new defense, new terminology, and we had a young team. So this year we got a lot of returning players, and, and they're, we're further along than, than we were last year this time. Second part of the question is uh, what changes have you made or do you think you need to make? Uh, defensively, we have some new fronts. We're still staying with our base 4-4, four, four, but uh, some different looks to give teams as far as alignments. Uh, offensively, we have some uh, new plays that we adjusted. Uh, our base offense is, is the same. Uh, some, some minor adjustments is with motions and, and uh, small things I think will give us a, a little better chance. One of the things we talked about uh, when I initially contacted you, you had mentioned that your numbers were down and uh, I know there's a number of freshmen included in that uh, core group. Uh, yeah. How does that bode for your uh, squad this year? Uh, yeah, numbers are, are hurting us right now. And, and the number one thing I worry about is, is injuries. And so we're really trying to go through practice now, staying injury free so that we can get to the competition. And, we, and really we have, we don't have any injuries that are, that are affecting us. Um, and, and really practice, that dictates how our practice is. And, uh, but we're getting along and, and uh, you know, the kids that I have are quality kids. One of the things it seems that high school football has moved into like a college type of thing where they platoon kids. You know, you have your defensive players and your offensive players and obviously with numbers low, you know, it kind of forces your hand. Uh, how does that play into the defensive side of the ball? Because I thought defensively is that, that hurt you last year. You know, you were able to score, but you weren't able to stop people. Yeah, you, you know, come fourth quarter, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty tired. Uh, but talking to other coaches in our conference this season already, uh, their numbers are down everywhere. And there's not, gonna, not a team in our conference that's going to be able to platoon. So they may have more subs, but it's, a level playing it's, field it's more words. level than, than what people would think. Now, offensively, you mentioned that you'd made a big shift last year. And uh, one of the things, whenever you change an offense, you got to have a quarterback that, that's on the ball. And I know you have a good one that you're planting in at quarterback this year. But uh, you did lose the guy from last year. And, you know, there's a certain learning curve for the new right. guy, even though he's a good yeah. athlete. Yeah, that was tough losing Kurt. He was a leading rusher in our conference as far as quarterbacks go. Uh, but the kid I have there, Jake Cans, he's... He was an all-conference wide receiver last year for us, an athletic kid, and he's smart. And, and in our offense where we run option, uh, it's not necessarily how much speed you have there or athletic ability. It, that's nice, but if they can make a read. And he is, he is well off in doing that. Cedar Grove Belgium really had a, an outstanding season last year. They lost in the final game of the playoffs. Uh, they look to be down a little bit, at least from last year, because they did lose some really great athletes. Who do you see in the conference as uh, challenging for that top spot? And where does Lutheran Christian Kohler <laughs> fit in? Right. Uh, obviously, Cedar Grove is, is on everybody's list right now as being the top team, uh, being state runner-up. Uh, they return, I know, a lot of their, their front line, maybe if all of them. Uh, but I think Howard's Grove, and they're always in the mix. Random Lake, Oostburg, they're always in the, the top. Uh, right now, we're fighting for that. Uh, that middle spot, and uh, I think that the, some of the teams in our conference we are, are going to be able to compete with and, and hopefully beat. One of the things you'd mentioned, uh, you know, we talked about it, the idea that the numbers were down, and then you had mentioned the numbers were down throughout the conference. Why is that? You know, what can a coach do to uh, enhance the numbers of kids participating? You know, one, one thing that, again, it's, I look at what we're, our program is doing. Uh, we are, one of the goals that I had is to start a youth program. This, we're in our first year this season with a youth program, and I've got 65 kids signed up for that. That's something that, that our program hasn't had in, in the past, and, 
And in a few years, I'm hoping that we'll have 65 in our program. And, and that's, that's all we can do is, is get them at, at the young age and, and try to keep them there and, and so that they're having fun. And, and if we see success at the older levels and they see success, then it just builds on each other. And that's our goal. Now, if we have some people that are watching and uh, they want to get their child involved in this, what would they do to? Well, I contact myself, uh, uh, Doug Bocchini, he's heading our, our youth program. He's, he's uh, well known in Kohler. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's co-op between the uh, Kohler and the Lutheran grade schools and the Christian grade schools right now. Uh, so the information is at their schools if they need to get a hold of somebody. All right, great. Uh, thanks for coming in and uh, best of luck during the season. Uh, we look forward to coming out and uh, seeing you play again. All right, thank you. We're going to step out and we come back. I'll have Chris Hine from South High School. Well, feds, right? Can I find a slightly used hatchback at one of those government auctions? Something roomy but practical. Need government information? Go to the official source, 1-800-FED-INFO. Chris, thanks a lot for coming in. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know it's a busy time of the year mm -hmm. for you. Uh, we're taping this show on a Thursday. Tomorrow, Friday, you guys have your uh, scrimmage. Uh, who are the teams you're going to uh, participate in that scrimmage against, mm -hmm. and uh, what are you looking for when, when you have these kinds of scrimmages? Uh, I think we have one of the best scrimmages in the state as far as competition. Uh, Homestead, who's been in the state finals the <laughs> last three years, will be at our scrimmage. They've won two of the last three years, the state title. Yeah, but what happened the one year when they lost? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they lost our own arrowhead. It's been those two schools in the state for finals the last three years. Um, then Kettle Moraine will be in, who's from a very strong conference, a very strong football program, and James Will Parker, who's one of the top teams in their conference. So, I mean, it's always a great indication uh, for our kids. It's a chance to measure up against some of the best teams in the state, representing some of the best conferences in, in the state. As uh, your team plays, what do you look? You know, what are you looking to? Well, I mean, for us, the biggest thing is, you know, you always are replacing starters. And we're trying, we're looking at those new kids that we're asking to step up and now be a starter this year and, and seeing how they compete. You know, we have a depth chart, obviously, but tomorrow we'll, we'll really find out who's ready to play against Bayport next week, Friday. Now, we had Steve Brixen on earlier, and mm -hmm. he said his numbers were up yeah. considerably. He was very happy in that respect. Yeah. Uh, Matt Zavada, who just stepped off, uh, said his numbers were way down, yeah. and they even added a school to their uh, right. conglomerate. And uh, you said your numbers are down at South. Yeah, they are. It's uh, you know I I think that's great that Steve's been able to uh, get his numbers up at North. Uh, but the trend that I've noticed talking to coaches from the EWC, from the area, uh, from the CLC, is it seems like the vast majority of the schools in the area's numbers are dropping. And uh, you know it's it's too bad because I think football has a lot to offer and. And it, uh, it just seems like maybe kids are, for whatever reason, are turned off, you know, from the sport. It seems, uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's just a, a trend that's going to go away and, and right. move back in the other direction here pretty quick. Well, as, as we've done these shows over the years, one of the things that I've noticed is that, you know, it does fluctuate. You know, you have your yeah. good years in terms of numbers and things like that. And then for whatever reason, you know, there's a downturn. And yeah. I know... Uh, I think it was before you even got to South High, they canceled a freshman schedule. No, it was actually 2003, uh, the year that we made our first playoff appearance. Our varsity was six and three, but we did not have a JV team that year. That's, so that's it was, was about it was about uh, six years ago, you know. And then we were able to build the numbers back up and had been growing and growing. And last year had our largest numbers, and then just fell off this year. So. Last year, you guys were uh, three and six overall, mm -hmm. two and six in the conference. Uh, what do you need to do to move up the ladder the, standing wise? Yeah, the big thing for us uh, this year, especially with our uh, lack, you know, our depth isn't as good as it's been in the past, is we have to stay healthy. I mean, that's really what hurt us last year. We started 25 different kids on defense last year due to injury, not because mm -hmm. you know kids weren't getting the job done and we had to replace them and 17 different kids on offense. So, I mean, I think that may be some kind of record. Uh, we, we need to stay healthy. It, it's really critical, especially this year, where we'll you know, be carrying around 40 kids on our, on our varsity with some sophomores suiting up. It's just critical. Yeah, oh, exactly. Now, one of the things that you did lose that was essential last year and 
was your quarterback, Jake yeah. Risto, and he's a, he was a good one. Oh, yeah. uh, what do you do to replace? You know, it's going to be hard because to replace Jake. I mean, the people that came to our games last year saw that he had a great year through the ball. I thought you, know, you had some good wide receivers yeah, too, but we, that yeah. kind of hurt you too when yeah. you had a couple injuries. Right, right. Uh, Renselman got hurt a couple games last year for us. We lost our tight end for four games last year. Uh, but looking forward to this year, uh, we have two quarterbacks that we feel extremely confident in going into the season. We're going to play them both. Uh, Jake Rissey is one of them and Ethan Berlin. Jake Rissey's a senior, throws the ball extremely well. Uh, Ethan Berlin's a junior is a, just a great athlete, runs the ball a little bit better. They're both very heady kids, both leaders. Uh, we're gonna find room for them both on the field this year. And, and I have uh, every confidence that the quarterback position is gonna be a strength again for us this year. Last year you brought a kid up, oh, maybe about four or five games in, a freshman, I believe. Mm, yeah. Uh, took an opening kickoff and right. ran it all the way back. Is that uh, young man out for football? Brandon and Capitillo, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, we moved him up the third game of the season against Southwest, uh, and he played predominantly special teams. He actually led the conference in kick returns last year. Um, we moved him up because our varsity kickoff team couldn't tackle him in practice. We said, we got to get this guy on the field. And <laughs> his first game, he returned a kickoff for a touchdown against Southwest, and we only had 10 guys on the field. So he's a pretty dangerous kid, and he's fun to watch. I think you're a little bit like the University of Wisconsin in that, you know, when you look back at South High, you know, in the past at least, you've always seemed to have a, a strong offensive line. Yeah. How does it look this year? Uh, I love our offensive line. I, our depth is a little bit, a little bit, shaky right now hopefully the, the second team kids will develop you know but when we talked about losing numbers it seems like a lot of the kids we lost were the bigger kids well, you know the, and so our line's a little bit smaller this year uh, than it's been in the past but we have I think our athleticism is a little bit better so far the kids are, are their work ethic has been unbelievable in practice and you know I just love coaching those kids and I don't care how big or small they are I'll you know I'll go to bat with those kids any day I, I mentioned before we went on, I said I pull this question off of yeah. last year's and I said I had to do a defense because that is yeah. your first love and uh, yeah. you surprised me with your answer. Are you still going to call a defense? No, year? actually I'm not and I know people <laughs> probably think I've, I've lost my mind, but uh, Coach Edis is actually going to call the defense this year. I'm going to call the offense. It uh, just came down to, you know, we're fortunate enough to have him again this year helping us and I had to give him more responsibility. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He's obviously proven <laughs> really? he knows what he's doing. Uh, last year, just coached quarterbacks for us, and I wanted to give him a, co a coordinator's position. And him and I share a lot of uh, the same philosophies defensively, I think. A and so that seemed like the better fit would be to have him mm -hmm. call the defense and me to move over to the offense. Finally, you're going to play North in a conference game. It's going to count, and you're playing them at the end of the season. Uh, how do you look at that? I mean, I think it's great for, for the fans, I think for the students. You know, for our kids and the players, they, they don't care if it's week one or week five or week mm -hmm. seven or week nine. They're going to get up for the North And they game. probably don't matter. It doesn't matter to them if it's conference or not either. Yeah, right, right exactly. I, but I think it's great that it's the last game of the season. I think that's uh, probably the best situation for the fans and the students. We can build some excitement in, in both schools leading up to the game and hopefully have a great crowd. You know, and hopefully the game means something for both teams. I really okay. hope it does. We're running out of time, but I do have one more question for you, and that has to do with the conference. How do you see that shaking out, and where do you see yourself fitting in? We have, you know, we have such an outstanding conference right now. I, you know, uh, not knowing everybody's depth chart or having looked over everybody's roster coming into the season, I just think you have to put, you know, those upper echelon teams, those teams over the last two years who've proven that they're going to be consistently towards the top. Bayport, who we open the season with, is always going to be a strong team. Green Bay Notre Dame has great tradition and will be a, a strong team. Uh, I think really Manitowoc is a team that the last couple of years has been four and five, five and four, that I think is going to be kind of the dark horse in the conference. Uh, as far as ourselves, if we stay healthy, um, you know, we hope to be to get in that upper echelon, you know, to, to get in the top five teams in the conference. You know, our goal is to make the playoffs and we got to get to five and four. Well, good luck with that coach. And again, thanks for stopping in. And when we come back, Chris and I will wrap up the program. Don't miss the next in a series of monthly programs about Sheboygan City Government. It's City Desk with Mayor Bob Ryan on WSES this Monday at 9 p.m.
welcome back everybody. First of all, we want to thank the coaches for coming in. Uh, they're uh, very giving of their time and uh, we really appreciate that. Yes, it is always nice for them to take their time. They do have practice, second week of practice, and they're coming in. I know Coach Brixen comes in right after practice to, to do his interview. Now, we need to go over these predictions because they're a little bit interesting, <laughs> and I think I gave you the results the other day, and uh, <laughs> not I won. So, <laughs> not so good this, <laughs> this year for me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, CLC first of all, and uh, get my sheet out. We can talk about that. Last year was Cedar Grove that uh, won the conference, and uh, they were very, very good. Uh, they lost a lot this year. Our predictions were uh, you picked Random Lake, I picked uh, Howard's Grove. Obviously, neither one of us got, uh, got that right, but uh, who do you see this year? Well, Cedar Grove last year, not a great season, an unbelievable season all the way to the state finals. 13-1, and one, by the yeah, way. Yeah, just lost at the state championship, so congratulations to them. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your group this year. I'm going to try that Howard's Grove team. Oh, you took my pick. <laughs> I'm going to go with Howard's Grove, too. I think they, have, uh, the, they always seem to have good speed, and uh, it's a good football school. Let's talk a little bit about the Eastern Wisconsin. Uh, you picked Plymouth last year, which is a popular pick, and I took Kewaskum, who had won the year before, and uh, that was kind of a chancy pick, I thought, because it's hard to repeat, but they did. They wound up going 7-0 and in conference and 12-1 and overall, so I won that one. How do you see the EWC turning out this year? It's totally different now. Years ago it was Falls and Plymouth, but it seems like Kowaskum seems to be the popular pick, so I'm going to take Kowaskum. Uh, they do have a great track program, and you know, like Howard's Grove, a speed thing that seems to be uh, working for them right now, so I'm going to go with that uh, popular pick of the Kowaskum Indians. And I'm going to take your pick from last year. I'm going to go with Plymouth, and uh, hopefully they can pick it up and uh, keep that championship, or bring it back, rather, into Sheboygan County. And now we move on to the... Uh, Fox River Conf Classic Conference, and uh, last year you picked uh, Bayport, an excellent pick. I picked Ashwaubenon, and total upset, Notre Dame, finishing 8-0 in the conference, 10-1 and overall. It surprised both of us. Yeah, I think, uh, again, a lot of graduation for some of the schools, uh, you know, with athletes and things. I think top to bottom it might be a little closer uh, this year, but uh, I kind of like... Uh, I'm going to go with Notre Dame this year, but uh, watch out for uh, Ashwaubenon and uh, Green Bay Southwest. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, Bayport, your pick from last year. Uh, before we move on, let's talk a little bit about Lakeland College because right now the schedule has them for three games. I don't know if we'll cover all three, but uh, they look to be kind of interesting this year. Yeah, they're always picked towards the top. And, uh, you know, looking at our schedule a little bit, the last game of the season we have them against Aurora. And Aurora's been kind of the team that's been pretty successful in that conference. So hopefully, you know, coming to Lakeland on November 11th, that final day there, maybe, just maybe, they'll have a chance to make a, a bid for an NCAA pick. They have a couple of players that were uh, recognized in the preseason, uh, Keith Woodson and uh, Aaron Kramer. Woodson, a cornerback, and uh, Kramer, uh, a lineman. So they've got some good players on the, on the team. Yeah, and that's nice to see out to Lakeland. And we always enjoy going out there, and it's nice that we have three on the schedule. Last year we had a little weather problem. Huh. <laughs> a little problem. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we can get out there, and we always like going out to see the Muskies. All right, Chris, thanks a lot for joining us on the program again and uh, look forward to working with you during the football season. Again, thanks to all the coaches. Thanks to all of you for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road.